Mario Buada, the AD100 interior decorator hailed for decades as the Prince of Chintz because of the cheerful flowered fabrics that were a signature element of his English country style rooms. The New York Times observed in 1970, he was the first to admit that he was born in the wrong century. His love is the ebullient English Regency period and most of the things surrounding him are choice examples of the early 19th century. Buada's first antique, he often recounted, was an 18th century lap desk other accounts identify it as a Sheraton box. It cost the 11-year-old Buada $12, and his father insisted that the relic, paid for in installments, be fumigated before his son brought it indoors. Collecting is a very personal thing, for him, who had a hunger for gilt-framed portraits of dogs, Delft ceramic jars, and hand-painted botanical cushions. An early influence on Buada's taste was his mother's sister, Mary Morrow who lived near the Buadas in a house that had been outfitted with floral fabrics and 18th-century English and French reproductions. Over the next five decades, Buada would become a household name. His rooms were emotionally appealing, and people felt happy and comfortable in them. His across-the-pond style of decoration, while candidly fertilized with footnotes, was thoroughly and unmistakably his own. Mario is touted for bringing the English country house style to America. I don't think it's ever gone out of fashion or ever will, Buada noted of his signature look and the spaces that inspired it. Colors were bold and saturated because, he said, brighter colors look better in America. The entrance hall of Mariah Carey's Manhattan Triplex, designed by Buada. A George III gilt wood and carton pierre mirror hangs above a Louis XVI-style white painted console with a marble top, which is adorned with a pair of painted toll graduating plant stands and a Staffordshire pearl wear. An array of porcelain figures ranging in shape from cabbages to tulips fills a George III red japanned bureau. A 19th-century continental canine form walnut child's chair sits next to one of a pair of gilt and ebonized wood dolphin form jardiniers. His rooms are vibrant, colorful, and specific, a rejection of the tasteful dreariness of gray, white and beige interiors found in so many homes. The aesthetic appeals to both old money and new money that wants to look old, he counts Barbara Walters, Jackie Onassis, Henry Kissinger and Mariah Carey among his clients. For a living room, Mr. Buada gives an amazing advice, yellow walls, a pale blue ceiling, and white woodwork. The floral fabric is coming back. I see color and pattern all around in the fashion world. This is one of the rooms that earned Mario the infamous moniker the Prince of Chintz. There's more to designing a timeless bedroom than filling it with beautiful things. For starters, you need to factor in the bones of the room. Romantic yet sophisticated and sumptuous beyond description, this is the bedroom of the moment. The legendary interior decorator Mario Buada knew this, and for a bedroom in the 1984 Kipps Bay Show House, he exemplified it. Does the mood determine how you'll finish the shell? Or are you guided by the room's original architecture? I think a room should be treated with its original architectural style, but you can elaborate on it. The walls. Always start by picking the important fabric because it rules the room. Next I think of what colors I want to use. 
pattern also gave the walls depth and the ceiling height. The ceiling is the sixth surface everyone forgets about. In a bedroom you want everything soft and comforting, a shiny finish would reflect too much light for a bedroom. After picking the most important fabric or wall color or anything you plan to work with, you decide on the placement of the upholstered pieces. What did you want to accomplish with this room? Did you want the feeling of cottage or classic? As soon as you saw the room you felt it needed what? Did the room need drapes with tester top on the curtains because the room could use the weight? Let's talk about accessories. They're objects, things you like, things you love to live with, things that are important to you. I always like a room to look as though it's been accumulated over a period of years. And I think that's what's nice about English houses, so many generations have lived in them. The room is sort of a scrapbook of family life. Every elevation should not only be pleasing, but also balance out the opposite elevation. In other words, if you're looking at the window wall, the opposite wall should balance out, you need the same height. And by using plates and brackets, sashes and bows to balance the four walls, you get a nice, even feeling all around the room.